Well, hey everyone, and welcome to Central. No matter where you're watching from or how you're watching, it's such an honor that you've decided to spend the next hour with us today. We're about to get things started, but you know, one thing our world needs right now more than ever is hope. And we'd love for you to consider the fact that you can be a hope bringer today in somebody's life. And one easy way to do that is by sharing this message of hope. We believe it could be exactly what somebody needs today. So why don't you take a second and share this on whatever platform you're watching on and partner with us to bring hope to our region and our world. Here at Central, our vision is to help you connect with God and one another. Everything we do revolves around these two things. So first off today, I want to invite you to personally connect with God. Open your heart, soul, and mind and invite God to meet you where you are at. And I believe God has something amazing for you today. Also, if you'd like to worship through your giving and partner with us to help others get connected, you can do that by heading over to our website at centralcc.ca forward slash give. You can follow the prompts, schedule a one-time gift, or set up regular ongoing giving. Thank you for believing in this vision and being faithful in this way. Can you believe Christmas is this week? We are so excited to offer you two unique experiences this year for you to enjoy with your family and friends. First, this Thursday and Friday is our Christmas Eve online experience at 3, 5, and 7 p.m. Join us at centralcc.ca forward slash watch, Facebook, or YouTube as we spend about an hour together celebrating the birth of a baby who forever changed the world. We want to encourage you to get together with your family and friends, or maybe your small group, and join us for this special online-only experience. Second, we know that being together is so important, especially at this time of year. And so we want to have the opportunity to gather together for Christmas this year. To make this happen, we invite you to join us to our Christmas Eve candlelight service on December 24th at 5 p.m. in the parking lot of our new York Road location. This is going to be a beautiful Christmas service that will allow us all to be together in person to sing some carols, hear a short message from Pastor Bill. This is an outdoor service that will last about 30 minutes, so we encourage you to dress for the weather and bring a lawn chair if you'd like to sit. All the details for both Christmas Eve events can be found on our website at centralcc.ca slash Christmas. Please be aware that we will be online only for December 26th and January 2nd. December 26th will be a rebroadcast of our Christmas Eve experience. Then join Pastor Bill on January 2nd, 2022, as he shares some highlights from the past year, along with a short message to start our year off. It'll be a great morning of reflection and looking ahead to what is sure to be an amazing year here at Central. Then we'll be back in person on Sunday, January 9th, as we start a new series called Freedom, looking at the book of Exodus and how to find the freedom we were created for. If you have not been to an in-person experience with us, we would love to have you join us. You can register for a spot at centralcc.ca forward slash connect. Something we want to mark calendars for, for the new year, is our 21 days of prayer. Starting Monday, January 10th through January 30th, we invite you to join us from 6 to 7 a.m. Monday to Friday and 9 to 10 a.m. on Saturdays as we start the year off in prayer and personal connection with God. We know for some of you, making it out of the house for 6 a.m. is sometimes difficult with small kids at home or early work schedules. So this year, we are making it even easier for everyone who would like to join us by offering both an in-person and online option. More details on how to join us will be available on our website soon at centralcc.ca forward slash 21 days. Now, our chosen method for connection with others is groups, and we have four kinds of groups here at Central. Community groups, small groups, interest groups, and support groups. If you need help finding a group that fits your needs, simply head to our website at centralcc.ca slash groups and search the many groups available to find the one that best fits you. If you're looking for a way to connect on a Sunday, today, after our 10.30 experience, Join us via Zoom for Encore, an after-service conversation. This is an opportunity for you to ask questions and continue the conversation around the morning message. If you'd like to join us, head to centralcc.ca forward slash connect 
and you will find a Zoom link there to join us. Again, if you have any questions or would like to pre-register your family to join us in person on Sundays, head over to our website or text the word CENTRAL to 905-937-5610. So that's all from me today. Our experience is about to begin and it starts right now.
you that we don't have to be afraid. Because you are with us. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father full of grace and truth. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth comes through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God but the one and only Son who is Himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father has made him known. Hi there, I am Lauren Krupash, and I have the honor of being a part of the board here at Central. It's hard to believe we are almost at the end of 2021. This year has once again had its fair share of challenges, but it has also provided many wonderful moments that we'll be sure to celebrate for years to come. We started the year in shutdown, unable to gather in person together. And as we've slowly reopened throughout the year, we have been so excited to see more and more of you and your families attending our in-person experiences each Sunday. There is something so powerful that happens when we worship and engage in meaningful conversation together. As we reflect on the year and look forward to 2022, the board and staff here at Central can't help but be overwhelmed with gratitude for you, our faithful church family. Despite the shutdowns and restrictions, the financial hardships and various difficulties experienced by many this year, we have seen our church family go above and beyond in generous, sacrificial giving. And because of this, we've actually seen our giving continue to grow this year. Because of this faith-filled generosity, we have been able to add more groups and more programs to our connection efforts and have helped hundreds of people engage with God and with each other in meaningful ways. As 2021 comes to a close, we want to invite everyone to help us finish the year strong financially. I want to encourage you to prayerfully consider what that may look like for you and your family. Maybe you give regularly and would consider giving a donation above and beyond your typical giving. Perhaps you have not been able to give anything this year, and that's okay, but would you be willing to perhaps consider giving a one-time donation to help us fulfill our financial budget for the year? We know for some, this might mean taking a step of faith and trusting God to provide. And I know from experience that taking that step of faith is well worth it in the end. God is always our provider and He is always good. For others, this is an opportunity to be generous with what you've been given and to utilize your resources for life change throughout our church family and the Niagara region. What an awesome opportunity that is. 
No matter the amount, it is because of your generosity that we are able to do what we do here at Central. Your faithfulness and dedication to the vision of our church is making a difference. Just look around you. There may be someone sitting close by who is hearing a message of love and of hope today as a result of your generosity that we've implemented through a program or an outreach opportunity or otherwise. If you would like to partner with us in your giving, the most efficient way to do so is by going to our website, which is centralcc.ca forward slash give and following the prompts to schedule a one-time donation or set up regular ongoing giving. You can also text CENTRAL to 905-937-5610 to receive a link. A reminder too that donations received by December 31st of this year are eligible for a tax receipt for the 2021 year. So today, on behalf of the Central Board and our amazing leadership team and staff, thank you for the trust you have bestowed upon us as we work together to be a light to our community. We can't wait to see what 2022 has in store for our church family. And we look ahead with great anticipation for opening our doors at York Road. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, my name is Bill Markham. I'm the lead pastor of Central Community Church. And I want to invite you to two incredible experiences that are happening this Christmas season. The first one is our Christmas Eve candlelight service that's going to be held at our new property in the parking lot at 5 p.m. on December the 24th. Now, the reason we're doing that is because of all the restrictions, we just wanted to meet all together and have an incredible experience. And we thought it'll be really fun to do that in anticipation of moving into the new space. So come bundle up, dress warm, but it'll be a short experience together as we explore and discover the beauty and the majesty of what Christmas is really all about. And then uh, we want you to invite your family and friends. We know Christmas is a really key time for that. So we've created an amazing online experience that you can share with your family and friends. So why not invite them over either on the 23rd at three, five, and seven, or on the 24th at three, five, and seven, and watch together. Share with somebody, be a part of the Christmas spirit of belonging and connection. And let's remember together this Christmas season that God came for us so we could know his love and express it and experience it everywhere we go. We wanna see you there, it's gonna be great. Merry Christmas. just me or are Christmas commercials really irritating? <laughs> like, like, here's what I mean by that, right? Um, Christmas commercials portray this image that just isn't real. I mean, everyone's perfect, everyone's happy, everything works out, and somehow that product made it all happen. Like, if you just had that product, this would be the result, and there's nothing more frustrating. There isn't, because that's just not real life. The truth is, as I look around and as I talk to people, I just realize so many people right now are discouraged. And so it made me think, why? Why are so many people right now really wrestling, even mentally, with, with discouragement and despair? And, and I think I have an answer. I'm not saying it's the answer, I just think it might be one of them. And here's what I'm thinking. Disappointment or discouragement is the gap between our expectation and our experience. Here's what I mean by that. Expectation is what we think the world should be, or maybe, maybe even what we hope it to be. And that's the problem with these ads. These ads put an expectation that if you just drank Coca-Cola, you'd be happy. If you just bought that car, she would love you forever, right? It's this idea, these false expectations, and we're bombarded with it everywhere. You can't escape it right now. It's on your phone 24-7. This is what the world should be. 
but it's not. You know your real life. You know what you're going through. You know the struggle. And here's the problem. The larger the gap between these false expectations and your real experience, the greater the disappointment. And our kids are suffering because they're expected to to get into that university and to to win the MVP of that event. They're expected to, to be perfect in their looks and everything. And no wonder because... No, they're not being told how to navigate the real life. This gap is a huge chasm. And it's why we are so disappointed in our culture today. So what do you do? Well, I want to explore that by looking at what Mary did in in the Gospel of Luke. If you have your Bible, I want you to turn there as we continue in our series, Christmas Icons. Mary had the gap. And she was somehow able to close it. And I want to explore that because maybe it'll help me. Maybe it will help you. So in Luke 1, 26, it says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, that was her cousin. Uh, Again, Elizabeth was was elderly, was barren. She was not supposed to have children, but in a miracle, she has them. We're going to get to that in a minute. But in that sixth month, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. There it is. Highly favored. That's the expectation. How how do I get that? What did she do to deserve that title? Here's the good news. Nothing. Nothing. It, It was all on God's grace. What God wanted to do for her and in and through her. Because here's the deal. It definitely wasn't circumstantial for Mary. I mean, the truth is, Mary, most scholars think she was between the ages of 13 and 15, and they think she was betrothed to Joseph, who they think was older, maybe even widowed. The reality is that this was an arranged marriage, and um, maybe she didn't want him. We don't know. I mean, we can speculate, but... Maybe it was because her her, fina- her situation financially with her family was she was really poor, and so they thought this would bring her some stability. So she's going to get married. She's really young. We know she's poor, and, and we know she lives under the oppressive arm of the Roman Empire, and, and the nation of Israel was fighting this all the time. Her circumstances are not ideal. Well, maybe that is emotional. Maybe she just had a positive demeanor. Maybe she just had a can-do attitude. <laughs> no. That's not true either because she would experience rejection. She'd be the object of of gossip and scandal. Even when Jesus grows up, they're still, they're just still being mean with their words. They even say to Jesus, aren't you Joseph's son facetiously? Because nobody knew who his daddy really was. Like she's, it can't be on circumstance and it can't be on emotion. I came across this really great article in Psychology Today, and and it summarized it this way, really good. The problem is not that people let you down. Okay, that's the emotional part. Look, sometimes we put our expectation on people, right? And and I will let you down. I I don't want to, and I don't mean to, but sometimes I just do, because I don't meet your expectations, um, and you don't meet mine. And so when we put our expectations on people to be something they can't, we're going to be disappointed. But the problem isn't that, nor is the problem that you didn't accomplish all you ought to accomplish. So you thought by now you should have had that job. By now you thought you should have been in this position. You thought your marriage would be this or whatever. Your children would be this. And we think that's the problem. It's not. The problem is that you keep wishing for what you think should be instead of accepting what is. Whew, that's hard. Because I have high expectations. Um, And the problem is that when we become obsessed with that, thinking about what should be, we can't accept what is, and that's the gap. That's the chasm. So what should you accept this Christmas? Well, the angel answers it. Mary, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. God is with you. This word favored literally means God extending himself to freely bestow grace. Um, In the Wild West, Um, there was this phrase that kind of came out of that. And it was this, it was the Calvary is coming, right? And it meant that maybe you're you're pinned down in a fort and the enemy was surrounding you and it looked hopeless. Um, And you could somehow, you managed to get a courier or a messenger out and they were able to find the Calvary and tell them, hey, we need your help. If that messenger could come back and tell you 
The Calvary is coming, help is coming. It changed everything. It gave you hope in the middle of a really awful circumstance and really rough emotions. And that's the point here. It's this idea that God inserts himself into our story and says, I'm coming for you. Why? Because I love you. And you say, well, how how do you know that? How can you prove that? I'll I'll prove it right now to you. If you go to Matthew chapter one, uh, there's this, the genealogy of Jesus. And and if you're like me, you probably kind of just skip through that part, get to the good part, right? Because it's the son of, the son of, the son of. And you're like, okay, yeah, just get to the good part. But, But you can't skip it. It's really important because the genealogy is broken up into 42 generations, hundreds of years. And that 42 generations is built up into three 14s, from from Abraham to David, from David to exile, from exile to Jesus. And in this genealogy are characters you would never expect in a kingly genealogy. Like, Like when a king wants to take a throne and assume power, he wants to prove through his lineage, I am worthy of this. This was my father. This was my father. Therefore, I deserve to be the king. But Jesus' genealogy is completely upside down. It's, it's full of broken people like you and me whose circumstances were way less than ideal and who emotionally were probably distraught a lot. I mean, in, in this genealogy, in, in most Jewish genealogies, men were only mentioned, but there are four women. There's Tamar, who, who deceived her father-in-law to impregnate her. Um, there's Rahab, the Canaanite prostitute, an enemy. There's Ruth, the Moabite. Moabites came as a result of Lot and his daughter and their ancestral relationship. And there's Uriah's wife. They can't even say Bathsheba. It's so shameful. Then there's Jacob, the deceiver. David, the murderer and adulterer. Manasseh. Manasseh, maybe one of the worst kings in Israel's history. They're all in this lineage. Why? Because it's a reminder that your value and your worth is not determined by your circumstance or your emotion, that your value is rooted in who God is and what he wants to do in and through you because no one deserves it. You can't earn it. You just have to accept it. That's what Christmas is about. So this Christmas, what can you expect? Well, I think you can and should expect that God is good and he is working all things together for good. Even when you can't see it, even when you can't believe it, even when you don't feel it, God is working all things together for good. So why is this so important? Well, because when you feel like you're limited, when you believe that, everything is impossible, right? Because when you believe that you have to be good enough or that life owes you, you're just setting yourself up for failure. When you you believe that you're a slave, you will always act like a slave, but when you believe that God is good, when you do, when you really believe that, then you can sing with the angels, joy to the world, the Lord has come. So the reality is you can't control your circumstances. You can't. You can't control your experience. There are are things that have happened to me that were way beyond my control. And there are things that I've done that I can't fix. I can't change. They're in the past. They are done. So the only thing I can change then is my expectation. And that's what Mary does. It says in in verse 29 that Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. (laughs) She's like, me favored? Are you kidding? Do you look around? What do you see, buddy? I'm not favored. And if God is with me, why am I in this situation? But the angel said to her, do not be afraid. And maybe you need to hear that too. You have found favor with God, not because you or I have done anything, but just because it's who God is. And you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. And so this word troubled, Mary was troubled, literally is the Greek word diatarazzo, and it's only used one time in the whole Bible. And it means literally to be deeply agitated, like on the inside. The the literal translation is to stir up like like a river after a deep rain. It's all muddy because it's so stirred up. The Bible is saying that as Mary looks around at her circumstance, as she looks at what people are going to do, maybe she's thinking this already, there's a stirring inside of her, an agitation. And maybe you know exactly what that's like, because I do. I know what it's like to have a storm inside because of my experiences, because of my expectations, because of my emotions. 
and I feel hopeless. So, so what is the answer? The angel gives her the answer. He says, listen, I know you feel that way. I know it looks that way. That's your circumstance and your emotion, but I'm gonna tell you the truth. God is with you. And she gives him a name. You're gonna have a son, but his name is gonna be Jesus, which is a derivative of the Old Testament name Joshua, which means Yahweh saves. Literally, God saves. What's the answer, Mary, when you're agitated, when you're in turmoil, when you are troubled, when there's a storm raging inside of you? I'm gonna give you his name. His name is Jesus. And this same Jesus, one day, when his friends were in the middle of a storm, and they, even though they were fishermen and had been on the ocean or the water all of their life, felt they were going to die, that's how bad the storm was. Jesus stepped into their storm and said, have courage, I am here. And then he spoke to the storm, and it was stilled. Because wherever Jesus has rule and reign, the storm must cease. It doesn't always change the circumstance, but it means he is with you in the circumstance. That's why he becomes Emmanuel, God with us as a baby. I am with you in it. And I know this is gonna sound a bit cheesy. I apologize in advance, but it helps me remember this. For us as followers of Jesus, it's not that the Calvary is coming. It's all that Calvary has already paid for it. Calvary has already done the work. When Jesus died and rose again, I can have assurance that he can do that in me, that no matter what my circumstance, no matter where I feel dead in my life, no matter where I feel agitated, God can bring it back to life. And he wants to do it in and through me. See, because here's the deal, right? Maybe you're hearing this and you're thinking, okay, so Billy, what you're saying is just lower my expectations, right? So if my expectations are way up here and my my experience is here, just, yeah, just lower them. Like just, oh yeah, I don't expect anything. Like take an or position. No, no, the exact opposite. It means take your expectations off things that cannot satisfy you, things that cannot meet your need and shift those expectations to Jesus, his way, his life, his love. And just like Mary, accept it and say, okay, May it be to me as you have said, God, whatever you want to do in and through me, even in the middle of my suffering, even in the middle of my circumstance, I'm going to put my expectation on you that you are good. If anything, it raises our expectation. I believe in a God of miracles. I believe in a God who heals and restores relationships and bodies and minds. I believe in a God who provides in them in financial distress. I believe that. That is my expectation. But I don't put it in things that fail. I don't believe the Christmas ads. They're just not true. I don't believe the social media posts because they're not true. Those things will not make you happy. Only he can. And so she asks a question that maybe you're asking right now. Well, okay, great. How? How will this be? Mary asked. Since I'm a virgin, again, right? She goes right back to the circumstance. Like, great, thank you very much. I appreciate the good, you know, pep talk, but I am in a bad spot. How can this be? This is impossible. And maybe you feel like that too. And the angel says to her, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And this is again a reflection back to Abraham and Sarah, the first elderly couple who were barren and couldn't have a child. Remember them? But through them, Israel was born. The nation was born. God wants to do something new in you and me. And this is so true. And then the definitive statement in verse 37. And and maybe if nothing else, maybe this Christmas, you need to just take a few moments to reflect on this, to think about this, to ponder this. In verse 37, the angel said, for no word from God will ever fail. No word of God will ever fail. And I had to ask myself the question, do I really believe that? Because if I do, I shouldn't have fear. If I do, I have to, really, I have to trust that God is doing something good regardless of what I see or feel. And then I love Mary's response. And I hope it's my response and your response this Christmas. She said, I am the Lord's servant. May your word 
to me be fulfilled. See, Mary's expectation is placed in a God who has proven himself. In this moment, Mary is saying, okay, God, I, I know you may not change everything around me. As a matter of fact, it's gonna get worse for her, but I'm gonna trust God that you are working all things together for good, and I wanna be a part of that. My expectation is that your love would rise up inside of me. I'm my, my expectation is that your hope would rise up, your joy would rise up, that I would be more like you than in a world that has tossed people aside, that's full of darkness and shame and regret. I would be light like you are because you are in me. And so you should and expect God to work all things together for good. So this Christmas, I don't know what your experience is. I can imagine that for many of you, it's really difficult. Maybe things people know about, maybe a lot of things that people don't know about. Maybe you're battling. Maybe it's in your body or in your mind or in your heart or in your family or in your finances. And you are in a desperate spot. And for you, just like me, the Christmas ads are so irritating. And maybe even sometimes sermons feel a little bit like that way because it's like, that's not what I'm experiencing. But my hope for you today is that you would shift your expectations to a God who can deliver. And that you would say, like Mary, God, do, you're doing something in me. I'm going to hold on to that. You are doing something in my family. You are doing something in my finances. God, you are doing something in my circumstance that I maybe can't see, but I'm going to trust. And help me to raise the standard of my expectations. God, help me to be more loving. Help me to be filled with hope and joy. May I be a voice of hope in this desperate generation. Like Mary, may you say, may your word, your promise, be fulfilled in me. And with that, I bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. And I want to encourage you to ask yourself, what is my next step? It could be as simple as reflecting on what we've talked about during the discussion questions, which will be on the screen in just a few moments. Or maybe you'd like to make a decision for the first time to follow in the ways of Jesus today. We'd love to celebrate with you and help you on that journey. So if you've made that decision, simply text the word CENTRAL to 905-937-5610 and we'll follow up with you later this week. Or maybe you'd like to get connected in a group and explore your faith with others. The best way to do that is by heading over to our groups page at centralcc.ca forward slash groups and find a group that best fits you. Again, if you have any questions on how to get connected, simply head over to our website or text the word CENTRAL to 905-937-5610 and you'll find everything you need there on how to get connected. Well, that's all from me. We hope you have an amazing week and we hope to see you back here later this week for our Christmas Eve experience. Merry Christmas.